You mentioned last year how obviously different it was in every single way for us. Um, do you expect maybe a little bit even more of a bump this time around, college fans just stored up and ready to you know, kind of travel and get out there for a bowl game after what happened last year for a lot of programs? I hope so. You know, it's uh, college football is a celebration in so many ways, and the way that that was stifled and continues to be in some cases through through COVID and the various variants. But uh, people all season long have packed stadiums. They've been fired up. You saw the championship games, an amazing championship game weekend across the board. And we fully expect that with vigor, these fans are going to come out and support their teams this year. And we couldn't be happier to, to be a part of that hopefully unleash that on our community and set a new standard going into 22 where people can be more positive about what's happening just in life in general. How confident are you with the, kind of the health, health and safety protocols and everything that you guys have in place and will have in place? Very. You know, we've, we've gotten, unfortunately, to be um, somewhat experts at how that needs to kind of ebb and flow based on what's happening, conditions on the ground in your own community, what's happening in the communities that your teams come from. Uh, we've seen that with our Florida Cup in the middle of – the summer this year in very difficult circumstances. Obviously, the bowl season last year when you know the, the, um, the it was pretty much at its height in terms of positivity rates and caseloads, um, all the way back to when you know, our community was blessed to host bubbles here and bubbles became a thing. I think we've learned in Orlando the safest way to conduct these events uh, in, in during the pandemic, and I think being able to kind of move that you know, move that gradient light, if you will, up or down based on circumstances on the ground. Right now we're in a good place, so we expect people to be able to come down and enjoy these games with very little restriction. But as it comes to the teams directly, we and our volunteers will be vaccinated in close contact with those teams, be masked in most cases, and we'll meet the guidelines of the each respective leagues as they vary. Can you uh, give us an update? Will the stadium be fully ready? And we are, you know, we're excited about the changes to the stadium, as you know, um, the north end zone has been filled in now. Um, they were putting the finishing touches that look like today in some cases on the seating. We feel good about where the stadium is. We're told that there's no hiccups, that we should be open in full form. So two new clubs on the sidelines, a litany of new restrooms and concessions on the plaza level, which are going to be a blessing for these crowds, you know, to be able to enjoy that that uh, kind of more of a free flow on the plaza level to go with what was already a robust set of offerings of food and beverage and, and restrooms on the uh, 100 level. So uh, excited, uh, not been told that there's any delays and we're excited for the first game to be the Cheez-It Bowl that the stadium, uh, the current final renovation of the stadium will be complete. How soon do you begin the next renovation? <laughs> well, you know, you're always working, so happy to, happy to jump into that now. No, we're, I, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our community and I'm proud of what it's done for essentially $260 million. You know, we go toe to toe with, you know, stadiums now that are as much as $5 billion in LA and anywhere in between. And, and Orlando has kind of a $5 billion city, as I like to say. And, and our stadium now is, is going to be very competitive with this most, you know, recent investment in finishing the job. What's the, what's the school allotment? And is it the same for all? It's not. There's a little bit of a difference between each of those contractually. But what we've seen over the years is there's a trend line across all these conferences that really kind of makes the actual school allotment of old uh, irrelevant. There, there's, a, you know, a, you wouldn't even need to put necessarily a school allotment on it in order to have success. And I think most people are finding their tickets in any number of ways these days, directly from the secondary market, from the primary, or through their own school um, you know, sites based on priority. So we feel good about this. And these are all pretty doggone good travelers. And, and I expect to be a really good year. When you talk to programs that have been here in the past, is there a common thread as far as the greatest part of their experience in, in coming to Orlando for, you know, for a bowl game? Well, there is. I mean, the weather, uh, the history, the tradition, um, the fact that you're going to get competition um, that you would expect to be at the highest level of the sport in the postseason. And again, we have worked very hard in this community for that. I think most people and most fans believe and expect that this is one of the top destinations in the country to go enjoy your postseason. And uh, so we lean into that, of course. We don't overprogram them. We let the city do what the city's great at doing in terms of hosting people. But I think the expectation that these two games pick at the top of these leagues and that the competition you'll be playing will be nationally interesting and relevant, that's what we hope to check a box on every year. And I think we've done that again this year. And you know, the country can kind of wake up, turn on their TV on the 29th and the 1st and know that you know, you're, kinda, you're in the big leagues you know, when, you, when you see the Cheez-It Bowl and the Verbal Citrus Bowl.